Um, so so let's let's start. For for those who haven't listened to the previous 49 episodes, tell us all about yourself. Uh, talk to us all about you, your background, and indeed your business. So that's really interesting, isn't it? When you're in the hot seat, you suddenly go, Oh, I've gone blank. Um, so I started life as an actor, which is kind of very different to find myself now running a business and um, I loved performing I still love performing it will always be my driving passion and of course I spent years studying acting techniques so all of the training that I do today and everything that I do today culminates from my life experience so I use Stella Zlowski in a technique in my coaching which is very similar to what Tony Robbins will talk about with you know the whys and the wheres but Actually, Stanislavski has seven questions that you ask to get to the driving forces behind your character. So I use those and underpin everything that I do with that. But of course, I started life working. So my first paid job was when I was eight and it was Heinz baked beans. Then I went and helped my granny and my mum working in um, catering. So from sort of eight through to all the in between the acting stuff that I did, I would do waitressing even when I was too young to do waitressing. So I kind of started working really young. You could say my parents put me out to work. Uh, I don't mean that <laughs> ridiculously. But then I got my first Saturday job working in a model railway shop and I was the stockroom girl. I then moved to a dance shop. And then from the dance shop, I moved to a big department store called Orders, stayed there on and off whilst working in Harrods and Selfridges, working in every single department within the retail store and on honestly it sounds ridiculous but I worked from perfumery to computers I mean I remember the Atari coming out the Commodore 64 <laughs> no I'm old um and of course I was there at the birth of video cam the camcorder the the VHS recorder all of these things were big moments in my life and then when I got older we so in my 30s um it was the birth of the internet and the birth of the internet ended up, guess what? I worked for Intel and I ended up teaching people to sell PCs. And this was at the birth of Centrino and wireless platform and technology. So, mm -hmm. and, oh, and I launched digital cameras. So when I look at what I do today, and of course then I ended up in channel sales and, and then uh, got to where I am today with KVDB. But when I look at what I do and how I help my clients, it, I can't think of the word I want to use, but it brings in absolutely everything that I started to learn when I was eight years old. <laughs> no, re really fascinating. And actually, when, when you were talking about that, I could just see the real passion in your face for, for all of those stories. And, and actually, from our sort of past conversations through networking and socials, I can, I can it really tie everything together. So br brilliant to hear. One of the other things I see um, with really successful people is, really successful people tend to have that really early job um and, and it's a real trait that i see just just um just a little bit of a probe really around around your acting background um do, do you miss do you miss acting at all and 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 i guess kind of the connection around that i know that um actors and actresses make such huge sacrifices um and have lots and lots of jobs around the world of acting like can, can you can you talk to um those listening a little bit about that yeah so um as an actor, you have, there's a joke, and I don't like this joke, but there was a joke about uh, what, why doesn't an actor open his curtains to the afternoon? It's to give him something to do, which is absolute poppy something. Um, it's, it's just not true. I used to work, when I worked as an actor, I used to run about 10 jobs. So I could be working for Intel one day, the next day I could be in Harrods selling uh, Mac or Bobby Brown. The next day I could be going out and coaching um, or presenting or giving out free gifts through event management. So there was lots of different things that I did and the acting work was wonderful when you got it. And I'm gonna load that there because there is only like 1% of actors that are truly successful. And what you're doing is you are pounding the streets. There's a song called Broadway Baby from Follies and it talks about um, walk, walking off my tired feet. Um, pounding 42nd Street to be in a show. And that is exactly what you are doing. You are going from casting to casting. At points, you are taking a, a trolley with you, a case filled with different clothes that you go into a toilet, you buy a coffee, you dive into the toilet, you get changed into the next casting, you set your hair for the next casting, you shake off the previous one, and then you go in and try and be somebody, not try, you create the new persona for the next role. And then you could go, turn up, you've done all this work, and somebody could just turn around and go, right, turn to the right, turn to the left, photo, thanks, and you're gone. And you've spent hours preparing. It is the most wonderful job when you get it. 
Mm. It is the hardest job when you're not doing it because you are doing everything else and you're going to the toilet when you're working in Harrods, literally checking your phone to see if your agent has called because you're half there doing the job, you're loving the job, but you're also working with other people and they're getting that call to say they're being, they've got a casting and you're sitting there going, why am I not being seen? And of course, what people forget about mm. acting is a lot of the time you're being cast because you are the right shape. You will fit the costume. Someone's pulled out, and it's very rarely to do with talent. Mm. 